إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ It is only and only you that we give ourselves to willingly into slavery. Now let's talk about slavery. Has slavery ever been willing or unwilling? What's the usual form of slavery? Willing or unwilling? Unwilling. Nobody says, hey, I'm looking at different career options. And I kind of enjoy long chains on my feet and you know. Nobody applies for the slave job. You understand? Slavery is never done willingly. In my crazy example, yes, you came up to me and said, hey, you're my slave. It's like, okay, let's do this. That was willing. But that doesn't normally happen, does it? Allah is, there is no more powerful master than Allah. And you know, here's the other thing about all other masters. Usually slaves love their master or hate their master. They hate their master. The first chance they get, they will want to get freedom. And even if they praise their master, is it real or ge genuine or fake? It's fake. But the surah began with Alhamdulillah. It's real genuine praise for this master. How can that be? It is because this master did not force you to be a slave. You have to come to that conclusion yourself. That's why he didn't even say, Allah. Be slaves to Allah. He, we said, Iyaka na'budu. We give ourselves to you in slavery. We are ready. We made the choice. We will ourselves. We will ourselves into slavery. It's incredible that the religion of Islam tells you in the Fatiha itself, you have to make a choice. Nobody can make you be Muslim. You have to come to Allah yourself. And why should you come to Allah? You should come to Allah because of the first three ayat of the Fatiha. That's enough for you. If you really knew what Alhamdulillah meant, if you really knew what Rabbil Alameen meant, if you really knew what Ar Rahman Ar Rahim meant, and if you really knew what Maliki Yawmiddin meant, each of those are plenty of reasons by themselves, but altogether more than enough to say, Ya Allah, I'm your slave. I don't want to do what I want to do anymore. I want to do what you want me to do. Because what you want me to do is better for me than what I want to do for myself. Because you are my caretaker. My, you love me more than I can imagine. And your love is coming all the time. And your love came, Allah mentioned His love even before He mentioned slavery, didn't He? So He gives His love even to those who don't become His slaves. Even those who say bad things about Him. Even those who disobey Him. Ya Allah, you've been so good to me, I am ready. Just, just take me. I'm ready, I sign up. This is what you and I say when we stand like this. Some of you are watching a movie, pretty bad one too. And then you pause, then you make salat. Ya Allah, I'm only your slave, I never disobey you. I came to this conclusion myself. Please guide me. Then you say salam and hit play again. That makes sense? You know? Some of you come for Jumu'ah. You come for, and thousands of you saying to Allah, Ya Allah, I'm your slave. I came to that conclusion myself. I realize I don't wanna, what I, when I do what I wanna do for myself, I hurt myself. I want you to guide me. And then right after Jumu'ah, you do some pretty messed up things. You know? What is that? That means we're saying something with our tongues, but it hasn't reached here. And we haven't actually thought about it. We haven't actually become conscious of what we are saying. Whenever we say, Iyaka na'budu, we are making an agreement with Allah. We're telling Allah something about ourselves. We're making a claim to Allah. How do you, how do you tell your mother that you love her? You come to her house. She tells you, take your shoes off, you don't take them off. She tells you, eat on the dinner table, you eat in the couch. She says, don't bring your friends over, you bring your friends over. She says, don't make loud noise, you turn the volume up. And then you tell her, I love you, mom. Is that, is that a joke? Is she hurt when, she said, when you say, I love you? Is that actually offensive to your mother? Are we being offensive to Allah? We do everything He tells us not to do, we do. And then we say, Ya Allah, I'm your slave, totally your slave, absolutely, Ya Kanabudu. I'm your slave. SubhanAllah. Wa iyaka nasta'een. And it's only your help that we seek. One of the most beautiful ayat in the Quran. Iyaka nasta'een. 
easy translation, it is only and only your help that we are looking for. It's only and only your help that we're seeking. But what in the world does that mean? My goodness. When we decide that we are going to be Allah's slaves, we have to realize that's not an easy thing. That's a pretty big commitment made to Allah. It's not a small thing. And when you make a big commitment, you need help. So we say to Allah, Ya Allah, I just made a pretty big commitment. I don't think I can do it on my own. <laughs> can you help me with that? Yeah, can I Please help. I can't do it on my own. That's the first meaning of Iyaka Nasta'een. But one of the most beautiful lessons in Iyaka Nasta'een, in the Arabic language, there are like a dozen words for help. Nasr and Musa'ada and Madad and Aoun. And, there are tons of them. Allah used Aoun. Nasta'een comes from the Arabic word Aoun. It's a very specific kind of help. I want you to understand this help because it will open doors of understanding in your life. It really will. When you say Iyaka Nasta'een, what are you actually saying? You're driving on the road and you have a flat tire. You pull over to the side. Now what do you do? You get out of the car and you look for a spare tire in the back. You take it out and you're jacking up the car. You're trying to lift the car so you can put the spare tire on. But you are not strong enough to lift the car the whole way. So when somebody is passing by, you say, hey, can you help me? And they help you. That is called isti'ana. In other words, isti'ana is when you are already trying, you could not finish, then you ask for somebody's help, that's called isti'ana. Isti'ana is not that when you had a flat tire, you sat in the car, and somebody passed by and said, hey, I have a flat tire, can you help me? He says, yeah, okay, well, here, here's the button to pop the trunk, can you press that for me? And then take it out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here, I'm listening to the news right now, I just... That's not nasta'een. That's not isti'ana. Why not? Because isti'ana requires that you are doing work first yourself. And then you couldn't finish and you need somebody else's help. You got that? So la lazy people cannot ask for isti'ana. Lazy people who don't do any work, you can't ask for that kind of help. By saying nasta'een, we are actually telling Allah, Ya Allah, I am trying. I am telling you I am trying. I am putting in the effort. You can see it. And now I need your help. So anybody in the world who turns to Allah and says, how come you don't help me? And people do that. People ask Allah, how come Allah doesn't help me? And they don't, don't even try themselves. They make no, no effort themselves, but they blame Allah for Him not helping. They have only themselves to blame. This is a principle of Allah. He will help you when you start making the effort yourself. If you never make the effort yourself, and He will not help you. There are two things you have to understand here. I'll go through both of them. There are people in the world who don't do any effort and then expect Allah to help them. It will never come. The Sahaba were helped by angels in the battle of Badr. You know about that? The companions were helped by angels in the battle of Badr. But the Sahaba had to go into battle, meet the enemy, and then the angels came. The angels were not there waiting ahead of time. We've been here since 3 o'clock, where were you? It doesn't work that way. Ibrahim salam has to be thrown into a fire, then it turns cool. You understand? Help, you have to do the, your part first. Everything you can, and then Allah's help will come. It doesn't come on its own. Then there are, the other side of that is, there are some people who think they can do everything themselves. They don't need to ask Allah for help. I got my job because I'm very intelligent. I have a successful business because I made some very good decisions. You know, I have a good degree because I'm very smart. You know, and we start thinking we, we get this because we deserve it. Or that we earned it ourselves. The Fatiha is teaching us success even in this life comes from two things. You put the effort yourself and then you ask Allah for help. Here's the final thing about Nasta'een. When you ask someone for help, it's always specific. It's always specific. If you, if I'm hanging off a cliff, help, and somebody walks by and hands me a water bottle, <laughs> the help I was asking for was, pick me up. It's specific. I'm not just asking for any kind of help. I need this kind of help. You understand? When your pen runs out of ink, 
and you say, excuse me, could you, could you help me here? And you, you're asking for their pen. So if they hand you a cookie, that's not the help you were looking for. Help is always specific. Is that clear to you? Because it's always specific, you're supposed to say what you need help in. But in the ayah we say, إِيَّاكَ nasta'in. Fima. In what? We need your help, we say. We, we tell Allah, Ya Allah, we're asking for your help. But you're asking for my help in what? Are you asking for my help in your health? In your family life? Are you asking for my help in your studies? Are you asking for my help in your, in your religion? What are you asking for? You know, when someone is so desperate, so desperate that they are at a loss of words, that they can't even explain what they need help in, then they just say, help! <laughs> That's what we say in the Fatiha. Ya Allah, help. Because the, way we, the things we need help in are so many, we can't even list them. So we just say, Ya Kanastain. Subhanallah. One of the most beautiful insights by Shaykh al-Sha'rawi rahimahullah on Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een. One of my favorite insights. He said, Subhanallah, he said, why did Allah say Iyaka na'budu first? And why did He say Iyaka nasta'een second? What happens if you reverse them? Why can't you reverse them? Iyaka nasta'eenu wa Iyaka na'budu. Why not? He says there are two reasons. Why were we put on this earth? To ask for help or to do worship and slavery to Allah? So our purpose is mentioned first. And what we need to accomplish that purpose is mentioned second. But there's another even more beautiful thing. When we enslave ourselves to Allah, when we worship Allah, it is for Allah. When we ask for help, it is for who? Ourselves. Iyaka na'budu is for Allah, and Iyaka nasta'een is for ourselves. What you want for Allah should be mentioned first. What you want for yourself should be mentioned second. It's good manners. It's good manners. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Subhanallah.